For this I have to say something about the title not only because it is the last one but because it is the only one that literally stands out. Cause clever they named it Two Graves and broke for this with the rule having only one word titles. This was a great idea as making us question for whom the two graves are. I must admit I always assumed it would have been clear since the show's creator said in an interview he would have liked to end the show with Emily and Victoria being the last ones standing. While all her loved ones are dead. And I must admit with Daniel dying and David being on the brink of death, they almost accomplished that. The only one left of the Grayson family is Charlotte who is only half a Grayson and half a Clark. And it could have been possible that both Nolan and Jack would die, too like Ben in the previous episode as casualties in this war. Major spoiler alert. But I think they solved this quite clever. And I am still angry with myself that I did not think about this earlier. Cause with David's cancer it is pretty obvious that our star-crossed lovers are the ones to bite into dust in the final episode. This is some kind of poetic. First of all I love what they are doing with the last flashback here. Posing the question that has been hanging around Emily since the first moment we saw her revenging. Is she a good or bad person and can her actions be justified? Or better in the course of all four seasons? When is she going too far? So for me it was out of question from the start that she would go to kill Victoria and not lock her up again. The question was if she would go through with it or if Victoria got a chance to kill her first. So yeah till the end I thought the two graves might be the ones for Victoria and Emily and I feared we get no happy end. This would have maybe be more true to the story and showed a better moral. But I love happy endings so I think this was the better choice in the end. Anyway like I said I love this circle structure and that we get a last monologue which is alluding clearly to her famous first words in the pilot episode. When I was a little girl, my understanding of revenge was as simple as the Sunday school proverbs it hid behind. Neat little morality slogans like, and two wrongs don't make a right, but two wrongs can never make a right, because two wrongs can never equal each other. When I was a little girl, the delineation between good and evil was as clear as night and day. But as life grows complicated, that line blurs and we learn to justify our actions when we believe we've crossed it. And I think she is here not only talking about herself, but about Victoria as well. If we aren't careful, those choices can fill us with darkness, leaving us destined to never see light again. In this they really feel like some twisted twin sisters in those old fairy tales of Grimm. The good one naturally blonde being full of virtues and the one with the dark hair being full of mischief and sins. Now seeing this little snippet I cannot understand why they did not use her time in jail to show how she suffers. I mean they tried so desperate to put her back in they could at least use this to show how hard it is for her not seeing Jack or her dad. And again Nolan is not visiting her. Why? Does he have more important things to do than visit his best friend in prison? They clearly have not succeeded in finding either Mason or Victoria. Let's talk about this ridiculous idea hiding in a building that was in construction. What was Margot thinking? And I still do not understand their plan. Mason and Victoria should stay dead and live with a false identity for what forever. And come on why did they not show us which name Margot choosed for Victoria? They lost the opportunity here to bring some fun and internal joke in. Remember in season 3 when Aidan and Emily talked about their false identities? They would have been Nolan's relatives so that he could visit them whenever he wanted to. Could the writers not settle down one name? And what about Mason? In season 3 we never get to hear about his false identity Emily gave him. I mean if Emily really got convicted she would end up in prison. So far so good but would not Nolan and Jack do anything to get her out and find Victoria to prove this case is just nonsense. And what if Victoria really reached out to Charlotte or Patrick after Emily was locked away for good.
What makes her believe that Charlotte would not go to the authorities to get her sister free? After all she despises Victoria as much as Emily and surely would have done so only to punish her mother. And if David was still alive she surely would have thought about him and how this would torture him in his last month, seeing his daughter being in jail for a crime she did not commit. A crime that even does not exist. So what was to gain here? One thing about Emily pleading guilty. Again they are making up a huge plot here for no reason. First is Emily now already lying to her father or is Nolan wrong about her reasons by pleading guilty? Does she want to protect him cause their plan breaking out of a prison is a new crime on her already long list? Or does she truly feel guilty about Ben's death and Nolan just assumes she wants him to set this plan in motion? Either way I hate this side plot cause it takes precious time of the final episode only to have this cool scene in. And show off Nolan's rebel shirt again from season 3. Sure the scene was great and everything we love about revenge. If it would fit the plot or was in some of the earlier episodes I would not have said anything. But here right now it looks only redundant and like a time filler. Cause the writers have nothing better to say here. I have also not talked about how crazy this plan is getting deliberately into a maximum secured prison just to break out. Would it not have been easier to break her out of the prison she is already in? Especially with the fact in mind that she already stole the keys. What should this plot tell us than how stupid the writers think we are? Much more compelling was the story about Victoria's mother. I really loved this little flashback cause it really put a great spotlight on Victoria's backstory. It really sheds a light on where all this darkness comes from and why Victoria has this major trust issues. Since season 1 we knew she did not trust Emily. For good reasons as we the audience knew but on the surface, Emily was just the perfect fit for Daniel and even open about her past as a teenage criminal. So what could you expect more? And in this season we learned that she did not trust David and chosen to abandon him. Safe to say all three Emily, David and Victoria have major trust issues. While all that happened did a number on David and his daughter they have good reasons not to be too trusting again with people. But Victoria had no real reason so it was nice to see that they cleared this up with that really dark secret about her father. Though it was convenient that she did just die right in time I love that they took this sideway to make Victoria's plan even more disturbing. She has really a dark and twisted mind and I still wonder why Margot is standing by her side even though she knows all the facts. I mean Victoria told her everything in the hospital. Sure only her side but she must have mentioned Conrad's deeds and Pascal's involvement in the David Clark conspiracy. So why is Margot still not looking for answers with the second party involved in this? Yes David. Nolan and Jack are not impartial but she could at least hear their view and then decide for herself. Let's talk about Victoria's funeral another redundant scene with no real use for the plot. We have already seen that Victoria was alive. And don't let me say anything about this really ridiculous disguise. If Vicky is trying to imitate Emily she who was a master of disguise in season 1. She does no good job here. So this scene makes absolutely no sense at all. If they had used this close up as big reveal she is not dead this could have been a great scene. Or if Louise had seen here and was so shocked that she went to Nolan to tell him about it. Maybe they wanted to make us see Louise's true sorrow because she was the only one willing to help the eulogy. But again this was just redundant and made her doubts about Victoria unreliable again. Is she really that easy to manipulate by Margot? And her speech was unintentionally funny so only a true sociopath could admire this and be flattered by her sorrow. Again I think it would have been better if she already had been on team Emily's side by this and gave them the needed information.
instead of making Victoria meet her just before taking off to her flight. I mean why should she be so stupid? Margot says it herself Louise is not reliable and could give that information out of a wimp to Nolan and Emily. Or should this be the typical failure of a sociopath? That he wants to boast with his accomplishment and needs people who worship him and how brilliant he is. Let's talk about fashion one last time before the wedding. I forgot to mention this in the previous episode, but I really love how Margot and Louise are holding up a torch for fashion and style. Since Emily is mostly set to wear orange in prison or lives on the run, she cannot pull off a fancy dress. But for Kareen Vanis and Elena Satine they pull all the strings. I love her floral dress from the last episode and Louise's changing outfits. Especially the black one with this lace inlet at the back and her last gown with this great embroidery. It looks a bit like the one Victoria wore when they accompanied Pascal's coffin. Maybe she is trying to dress like her icon to feel closer to her. But Margot's dress with that pins is just great. It looks more aggressive like her previous looks, but still arouses the association that she is trapped in this and tries to break free of Victoria's unhealthy influence. Cause if it was not for her I think Margot would have never gone that far in her revenge. About Emily and Jack playing detective. If this would have not led to their famous one and only making out scene I would have not stomached this. Yes I get that Emily needs someone who can go with her and Jack surely volunteered by why do they have to hide in plain sight. Would it not been better if Nolan and Jack did the investigation and kept Emily informed? And for the making out scene, is it not a bit inappropriate having sex in the house where your ex-boyfriend got killed? What was the conversation in the writer's room? Or did they not get it what they were doing here? I must admit that I am torn with that scene out of two reasons. First they made it really difficult for Emily Van Camp and Nick Wexler to convey this sudden passion when we had zero guidance to this pairing during almost the whole season. I mean in the last few episodes Nolan almost talked Emily into going after Jack. And he seemed already given up on her. So this conversation was surely tough to shoot for both of them. You're dead. Of course they also could not resist putting in the running oh. bag that everyone who is close to Emily gets injured or killed. I knew that he would be the one who got to meet the assassin. The only question was if they really would let him die how Nick Wexler himself would have preferred. Or if they could send help in time. I must say I was happy that they could save him cause despite him being involved in all kind of crazy stuff this season. He would have not deserved to die as another victim of the war. Yes this would have made him a hero and some kind of a martyr and Emily would have been punished a bit more. But was losing Aiden in season 3 not punishment enough? Though I hate that they can talk like this even though police is all over the place this is one of my favorite scenes of the finale. Cause it makes clear that Victoria deserves to die and that Emily cannot shake her patterns. Like she said in one of the last monologues in season 3 every new loss fuels this fire and rage. So the only end to this is either if any one of the two who are responsible for this war is dead and wins or both die. Another thing. I appreciate that Louise is finally helping them. But like I said we have no real explanation why she is switching teams in the last moment. About Nolan facing Margot and making her join team Emily as well. Like I said this all feels so rushed and they really could have given this more time by pulling this off far earlier in the season. Though I like his quote that he will deal with Margot and the scene later when they team up to capture white gold. And they really make us believe Margot is the big bad here cause she is drinking like Conrad and Victoria used to after a long day. Though it could also be her bad conscience that she tries to calm with bourbon. A common trope in American TV shows. 
I wonder if Bourbon Whiskey has a contract with all big networks here. I like the sentiment here though with Nolan's little horror slideshow. This and their conversation are very much on the nose, but I like this open talk it is fitting for the finale. Cause they danced around this topic for a while now. They are walking on a thin line here, too. Since the only difference still is that Emily did not kill anybody but Nolan gave his okay to killing Victoria only minutes ago. So he telling Margot she crossed the line is not that fair. And I love how she is fighting back and throws all her loss into his face. Since she was hurt a lot by Emily. Not that she intended to do this but Margot seems to be in the very same position as Emily was in season 3. Because Daniel shot her she could not have children and Victoria took her future with Aiden away from her when she killed him. So Margot seems to be a mirror for Emily. And I love her quote that despite anything she does she can never get them back. Cause this is the true raw despair Emily felt at the beginning of this season before she got her father back. By the way besides the possible loss of Jack I think that this is something that kept her going. So it was a crucial part of season 4 that he is back and can be there for his daughter. Another thing. I love that he is giving her the chance to redeem herself. Though they leave it open if she truly ends up in jail I hope that her life is not over after this and the judge takes into account. How she was manipulated by Victoria and that she wanted to stop the assassin. And of course the circumstances that she lost her child and the father. About Jack and David in hospital. Did I mention they rush into this finale in every possible way? And that I am furious we never get a proper proposal scene with Jack and Emily. I mean this half-hearted scene asking David for his permission is no real substitute for that. About Victoria's dress. This was something I enjoyed she looks like a lamb going to slaughter. As if she would know she had to die and therefore was not really trying that hard to make this flight plan work. Maybe this was her plan all along. Die together with Emily so she could take her arch enemy with her. Cause when she got through her things with the new passport, we saw the weapon Conrad gave her as his wedding gift. I only thought she kept it to defend herself like he said. But now I think she maybe planned this all along. And her phrase to put an end to this war was meant literally by putting an end to her and Emily. A murder-suicide if you think so it makes totally sense. Since she already said goodbye to all her loved ones and lost nearly anyone on her side. Now the last ones with Louise and Margot. Now about the last scene with Emily and Victoria. As I said multiple times I am not a big fan of violence and killing people of but in one thing Emily is right. For everything Victoria has done and given how dangerous she is this vendetta can only end with her death. So in a way David is protecting his daughter twice by killing her. First which is most important that Emily does not throw her life away because of this woman. David knows what he is talking about when he says what it means to kill someone. He still seems not to be over about the man he had to kill to prove Malcolm Black that he is worthy to stay alive. And he already killed Conrad. So killing one more Grayson seems to be not a big deal for him. Though I am wondering how he could actually found the power to pull the trigger since Victoria seems to be the love of his life. But maybe there is finally enough hate because he saw firsthand what this woman did to his daughter in the last days. Cause having her killed in front of a camera would have surely bring her in jail for life. And second because Victoria would never stop to haunt Emily. That she was shooting her after David shot Victoria is the last proof. And you see how they are rushing into this cause Emily being shot by Victoria would have been the perfect cliffhanger for the last episode instead of this lame revelation Victoria was alive and then getting killed.
and for the happy end with recovery and wedding we only get lousy 10 minutes. Though I feared they would end the show with this cliffhanger as I saw the commercial for this episode. This would have been really hard. But you must admit it is a really strong picture Victoria and Emily lying in their own blood on the floor. And finally David is totally ignoring Victoria trying to save his daughter. A good reverse of the scene in which he went away with the ambulance and left Emily alone in the dark. And I love this little extravagance of Victoria wearing golden shoes. Even in death she wants to set a style statement. About Charlotte again. They really did her no favor this season. Why could we not get a little reconciliation scene between the two? Maybe at David's funeral? She surely attended this and they got close together after Victoria's final death. Though I love the sentiment that Emily put the infinity sign on his grave and Charlotte being her bridesmaid again. The flashback on David's death was hard to stomach for me for obvious reasons. Seeing how she is losing him again in an instance just broke my heart. And made me think about how lucky we are when those things come quick and we have not to suffer that long. Though it is a total cliche I like that he was dying in winter. Seems fitting that he got a few months left after Victoria's death. And even more fitting that Jack and Emily waited long enough to cope with the loss and settle in before they finally got married. They both had much to process this year. Though their conversation really hit me that he was thankful for the year they had together and that he got to know his grown-up daughter. I really wished that was me when he said all that beautiful stuff. Another thing. I think he did this on purpose make her go to the infinity carving so she had not to see him die. I have heard about this and seen this often with my pets. They try to hide and separate themselves from the other animals and even from me. In order to die alone. I think this is some kind of instinct. Like I said I have mixed feelings about this finale, but these three scenes were definitely my all-time favorite though the whole show. First Victoria getting killed by David. Because for me this showed that he finally has chosen his daughter over his former paramour. Second the next scene with Emily and Jack finally tying the knot. And last but not least the very sad dying scene of David. Cause this feels really that this show is ending. And though her monologue is really fluffy there is a true core in it. Since if she learned one thing from all this mess with Victoria this season that revenge is not worth it. I like the idea that when she is visiting her father's grave she also goes over to the Grayson graves. Like she is testing if she is truly dead. Though I missed her walking over to Formunda's grave. And I am still wondering where Aidan is buried. Did his mother bury him alongside his father in England? So that Emily cannot visit his grave without flying to another continent? Still I wonder about the story with her chest wound. Where did Victoria hit her? I thought it was the abdomen again. But that does not fit this scar. So is it true Emily had to have heart surgery? I mean her nightmare about having Victoria's heart transplanted out of Charlotte's wish is just that a nightmare. Emily Van Camp herself and the showrunner confirmed it. This scene should just underline the fact that Emily or Amanda has to live with this trauma for the rest of her life. Now the last fashion talk about Amanda's final wedding dress. I must admit though her dress for that wedding photo shooting with Daniel was just fabulous I prefer this one. The classic some kind of decent style really fits Amanda. And the classic reveal with showing us first the back of the dress really made me fall in love with this little scene. The cream color and this little lace inlet on the neckline made the dress look a bit more sophisticated. So I am happy with this even though many think this was too plain. But it fits Amanda's character now that she has not to put up a facade anymore. Whenever we saw her with Jack and David she wore casual clothes and it seems to me that she feels far more comfortable in it. The only thing I hate is again her hair. 
though it suits this more natural look a band or at least a flower bread would have been nice. I get that she does not want to put on a veil cause this is already her third wedding if you count the one with that Takeda student in. What I love is this tableau with the rose wall. It really looks like a dream coming true. And Perfect was bringing the first song for you back, though it always was the theme for Amanda and her father and the flashback started with this beautiful song. I like how they give this a new meaning with being Jack's and Amanda's song. Cause now that David is gone and her revenge is over she can finally focus on Jack and living a happy life which she earned I think. Not that I would say all she did was good and she should not be punished. But I think all she had to endure and all the losses which Jack shows us in his wedding speech seem to be punishment enough. By the way it was a nice idea having him giving some kind of tribute speech to all the friends and loved ones they lost. They tortured Jack and Emily in this show so much that I am happy that they granted both some happiness in their life after revenge. And having everyone be part of this and reconciled like Charlotte and Stevie is a good thing. Even though we did not get to see it but I think in the one year they all had time enough to talk things through and put differences aside. All the close-ups were nice too having Nolan cry on the wedding and everyone reacting to Amanda's wedding gift for Jack. This puppy dog was just the cherry on top. And the wedding gift of David with the boat and having them both literal sail into wedding haven was a real nice idea. Especially when I saw in the deleted scene that he named the boat Infinity. Though double infinity would have been the right expression. But maybe they wanted to emphasize with this change that it is Amanda's and Jack's journey now. I mean Amanda would have been too much since we had that with Jack already. Who showed his obsession right away in the pilot episode. But this code will always be a connection between Amanda and her father like the nickname my father gave me Moppet. Though I use this scene a lot I do not quite like them saying the three words again. Obviously the writers could not think about good wedding vows instead to underpin this scene. But I must admit that Emily's and Daniel's vows in season 3 were not that good either. So maybe it is for the best that they skipped this path. Would have been nice if we had heard Amanda's view on Jack. Or giving Nolan a speech full of jokes about how long they all waited for this to happen. If they had given it more than just 10 minutes they could have done better I think. But at least we got a nice wedding kiss and this last kiss on the boat. Though I never can watch this scene again without thinking about his slip of the tongue from Nick Wexler still calling her Emily. I love you Emily. That's not it's Clark, dumbass, come on. Yeah. Nolan has it far easier with his M's cause I think if they really had a fifth season this would have been a problem for all the cast. Now suddenly calling her Amanda. Even more if you know that Emily is her real name and the actors who work so closely together will surely slip her real name from time to time in. This might be totally silly but I really love that they ended the show with this iconic sunset at sea. That looks pretty much like the intro they used on almost every episode. Cause that was something what me and surely many fans lured into this show the maritime theme and environment. The Hamptons are just such a beautiful place. Rich people really know where to buy a house and go on vacation. About the promised spin-off, as I saw this ending I really thought the show would go on without Emily and Jack, maybe having them coming back for a few guest starring moments, and Nolan would have surely keeping us informed about their happy married life. Anyway I am still not over it that they did not give it a shot, since Gabriel Mann was a fan favorite and there are far worse shows on American television right now. Especially with new revenge targets they could have gone back to the formula of success from season 1. But it was not to be, so we have to stick with what we have. And I must say I liked re-watching the whole series for these videos. I hope some of you enjoyed me brabbling about what I like and dislike of my all-time favorite TV show.
and maybe something interesting was in it for you. Though I am happy that I got this project done, since my love is really creating those little music videos, cause it combines both passions revenge and music. So I will now go on posting all the music videos I have still on my list which is always growing with new songs and new requests. Do not hesitate to send me new ones, I will make them as fast as possible and as good as possible. So stay tuned for new content, and I hope we all can agree that this show will have a special place in our hearts.